Old School RuneScape, released in February of 2013, is an archived version of the game from RuneScape source code in August of 2007. The lost source code, found from August of 2007, was an incredible find, as by December of the same year, the wilderness was removed to stop botting and real-world trading of RuneScape currency. Since the game's release over 8 years ago, one of the most successful updates was Iron Man Mode, originally released in October of 2014. Iron Man Mode was a self-sufficient type of gameplay where players were restricted from trading using the Grand Exchange, PvP, most group minigames, and almost all other group activities. Shortly after the update, a player by the name of Kemp Q realized that Iron Man accounts could still participate in PvP while being unable to loot items or gain combat experience. The ability to not gain combat experience was rather peculiar to Kemp Q, and with that, he concluded that Iron Man accounts could be the perfect lens of opportunity to creating an overpowered PK build. That PK build would eventually become Solus Atomus, featured in episode number one of Most Unique Accounts three years ago. But today, I want to feature his other Iron Man account, War Artisan, which is perhaps the strongest PKing build in the history of Old School RuneScape. Thanks to a new update in April of 2021, which changed the Dragon Warhammer requirements to wield from 60 attack to 60 strength, War Artisan can now hit 56s at just 44 combat, arguably the highest hit to combat ratio in game. To get to this point, the account has taken 5 years of perfect planning. There's been quite a bit of luck along the way, including getting the Dragon Warhammer, a 1 in 5000 drop rate at just 69 ranged. Although he was hoping for the Dragon Warhammer by 67 ranged, as he would have been able to stay melee based at 43 combat, 69 ranged was still incredibly lucky. His kill count was only 1186 at Lizardman Shamans, a 21% chance of getting the Warhammer at this kill count. The 69 ranged gave him one extra combat level, but also gave him the room to get 6 attack levels in the process, making him melee based again at 44.88 combat. Kempke's journey has been nothing short of spectacular and a link to a few of his videos of this build are in the description. Okiwi is a Nabi Mauler build sitting at 199.1 with 13 prayer, 95 hit points, 66 magic, and 66 ranged. Okiwi started this account in 2018 as a side project and after hitting 99 strength by September of the same year, he started to vibe with some other accounts of the same build. But Okiwi wasn't happy with being the same, he didn't want to be the same, and after all, this is most unique accounts, so of course he didn't stay the same. Okiwi had a goal of becoming a pet hunter, and at one attack, becoming a pet hunter was quite a bold disposition, considering he didn't even know how realistic it would be. But through theory crafting different ideas like using venom ults and alternate accounts for things like vengeance and ring of recoiling, which are all net zero damage, Okiwi figured that boss pet hunting was possible. He first tried getting the King Black Dragon pet, and he had quite the idea on doing so. Okiwi used a Venom Ult to get the King Black Dragon to just a few hit points, and from there, he would Bone Dagger spec, which guarantees a hit on Okiwi for the kill credit. These were 6 minute kills, and at 10 hour days, Okiwi would go on to get about 60 kills per day. By early 2019, he became the first Abi Mauler to finally get the King Black Dragon pet at 1232 kill count, or about 123 hours. Just 19 days later, Okiwi would get his second pet, the Calphite Princess. This was his method on the screen now. All you need to know is use the Bone Dagger spec in the beginning of the kills, quickly went to a safe spot on Okiwi, and then proceeded to use several Vengeance and Ring of Recoil alts to get the kills. At 8 minutes per kill, he managed to get the pet at 846 kill count, which was roughly 113 hours. Okiwi's next play was the Wilderness Pets. In January of 2021, speculation began that they could revamp the Wilderness bosses, so Okiwi got to work. Just 3 months later, in April of 2021, Okiwi had achieved all 5 Wildy Pets, becoming perhaps the first Abi Mauler to achieve this. Individual kill counts, average time per kill, and approximate total hours for each pet are on the screen now. His method for all 5 Wildy Pets involved using a Bone Dagger special attack to deal damage, and then some form of net zero damage method with alternate accounts for the remainder of the kill. Future goals for Okiwi include 99 Slayer as well as the pet Dark Core and the Abyssal Orphan. 
In 2018, Do Melee, known as Overfletch on YouTube, was looking to start a new account to play on the side. After some theory crafting, Do Melee thought that a one magic, one ranged Iron Man was 100% possible, apart from a few major limitations. He could only get black gloves, and he could never unlock piety. Do Melee would start his adventure by barbarian fishing, which would passively train his strength and agility levels in the process. He quickly got 85 fishing, which in turn also gave him 60 strength and 60 agility. After getting starter GP from the agility pyramid, Do Melee set his first major account goal on getting the melee only fire cape. After countless hours grinding his melee stats and upgrading his gear, he got the fire cape on just his third attempt, which ended up being a 5 hour cape. After the fire cape, it was time for melee only barrows. After 156 kill count, which was about 3 to 4 chests per hour, tank gear was achieved a Darox plate body and Varrock plate skirt. His next sights were on the Zami boss, Krill, in Godward's dungeon to see if he could get an early Zamorak spear. If you don't know, 70% of an NPC's magic accuracy rolls off of your magic level. And at 1 magic, Krill's accuracy was very high. His magic attacks could hit between 10 and 30, and Krill's magic special attacks could hit between 35 and 49. To even get a kill, Dumele had to suicide an inventory of food first. Based on that fact alone, he was only getting 1 kill per hour. But what happened next was a taste of hope. He got the Zamorakian Spear at just 12 kill count. He immediately converted the Zamorakian Spear into a Zamorakian Hasta, which became his best in slot melee weapon. With the Hasta, Dumele would go on to get the Berserker Ring from the Dagonoth Kings, followed by 85 Slayer, which he then would get his hands on the Abyssal Whip. Although the Abyssal Whip was a great unlock, he knew the Zamorakian Hasta was what was needed to get his hands on the one thing he always wanted, the Elysian Spirit Shield. But Do Melee still didn't quite have the gear required for that, so he created a dream list of gear on what he still needed. In the ensuing two months, he got everything on his dream gear list and was ready to start the Corporal Beast. Or was he? The fastest way to get to the Corporal Beast was using the game's necklace within the jewelry box at a player-owned house. But to even build a basic jewelry box, you need three charged game necklaces and three charged ring of duelings. Two things that would be impossible to get with this one magic, since they require level 7 and 27 magic to enchant respectively. After much theory crafting, Do Melee found a workaround, level 42 and level 77 skeletons and Tarn Slayer. These NPCs would drop games necklace 2s and ring of dueling 3s at a 1 in 64 drop rate. And with the help of an NPC Murky Matt at the Grand Exchange, partially charged jewelry can be combined into fully charged jewelry. After getting the charged jewelry, Dumele would make a basic jewelry box, which solved the teleportation issue to get to the Corporal Beast. Each kill would take about 20 minutes, which would come out to around 3 Corporal Beast kills per hour. At 21 kill count, Do Melee got the Spectral Sigil, and at 219 kill count, if you can believe it, he got the Elysian Sigil. He has since created the Elysian Spirit Shield, and now has his sights on maxing his total level, which would be 2081. Next on 5 of Old School RuneScape's most unique accounts is the player 3rd Simon. 3rd Simon is a 13 HP Iron Man account originally inspired by Kemp Q's account Solus Atomus. 3rd Simon first created his account in 2016 and fast forward 5 years later, he is one of the best players to ever play this style of gameplay. 3rd Simon is currently 50 attack, 99 strength, 1 defense with 99 hit points, magic, and ranged. He's completely maxed as of May of 2021 and is one of the lowest levels to ever enter the 2000 total level worlds at just 58 combat. Over 8,000 hours have been invested into his account in the past 5 years. What makes 3rd Simon's account unique is his 99 Slayer given his combat level and Iron Man status. His 99 Slayer was done completely from scratch. Since he wanted to preserve his low hit points level for PKing purposes, the only way to efficiently train his Slayer level was by cannoning. To cannon his Slayer, 3rd Simon had to smith an astounding 1.1 million cannonballs. The math on just smithing the cannon balls comes out to roughly 710 hours. 110 hours to buy the iron ore and coal ore from the blast furnace, 90 hours to smelt the iron ore and coal into 275,000 steel bars using the blast furnace, 
and then 510 hours to smelt the 275,000 steel bars into 1.1 million cannonballs. Despite all of this, smithing the cannonballs was only half the battle on his 99 Slayer journey. Getting the Slayer levels was a mammoth, no pun intended. His Slayer experience averaged around 13,000 per hour using Crystallia, the Wilderness Slayer Master, making the total Slayer grind over a thousand hours. Factoring in the smithing of the cannonballs, the whole grind was just shy of 2,000 hours. During each Slayer task, every hard clue scroll he received from the wilderness he did as well, in hopes of getting the Robin Hood hat. Unfortunately, even with 494 hard clue scroll completions during the journey, the Robin Hood hat was never achieved and remains one of his long-term goals. All of his other non-combat stats to 99 are no small feats either. His 99 farming grind consisted of over 2,222 farming contracts. Those farming contracts, which fueled the herb seeds for consistent herb packs, runs, have gotten 3rd Simon over 28 million farming experience and also enough herbs for 99 Herblore in the process. Overall, the dedication of this account is flat out insane and one of the most unique accounts in old school RuneScape's history.